Mary Jane watches from behind the glass at Aunt May, lying weak on a hospital bed. Aunt May is dying. When Spider-Man unmasked himself to the world, he thought he was doing the right thing. It was for the good of the country, right? But all that did was make it easier for Spider-Man's enemies to find him, and Aunt May got caught in the crossfire. MJ calls Peter. Aunt May's not doing well. She's in a coma, kept alive by machines. Peter can't muster up the words to describe what he's feeling, but he promises Mary Jane Jane one thing. You're gonna see a lot more people being taken to the hospital before this day is out. Spidey wreaks havoc on the criminals of New York, fighting with renewed anger. It reminds him of all those years ago, when Uncle Ben got shot. He was ruthless and violent, taking out his rage on the bad guys. Spider-Man dangles one of those bad guys off a skyscraper, demanding answers. You sell Gunter Wass sniper scopes, very high end, hard to get in the States. Who did you sell them to? The criminal gives up his buyers three names. The first two were just a couple of rich hunters looking for an edge while on safari. But the third name, Jake Martino, that's a lead. Spidey discovers Jake is about to leave the city. He's got to move fast. He tracks him down to Grand Central Station, ignoring the adoring fans approaching him. Spider-Man shuts his eyes, concentrating on the target. He focuses his spider sense to track down his aunt's shooter. Everything is black until... Gotcha! Martino stops in his tracks, then bolts away from from Spider-Man. Spidey's happy he's running. He wants Martino to know what it's like to be hunted, cornered. Martino gets a couple of shots off, but you need more than a gun to stop Spider-Man. Spidey breaks Martino's arm, letting the gun fall to the floor. Pick it up! You've still got one good arm. Go ahead! No! I said pick it up! It's not so easy when the other person fights back, huh? Not as easy as gunning down an old woman. Peter strips his mask and begins to beat the helpless Martino. Peter grabs Martino Martino by the collar, tears streaming from his eyes. First, Martino's going to tell him who hired him. Then, Peter's going to kill Martino. Peter can kill him fast, or he can kill him slow. It's up to Jake. Peter's spider sense kicks in. Just in the nick of time, Spidey leaps back, narrowly avoiding gunshots headed right toward him. Martino wasn't so lucky, taking a bullet to the gut. Peter spots the shooter fleeing on foot. Just one chance. Spidey heaves a spider tracker into the distance, catching onto the shooter's foot. EMTs arrive for Martino. Spidey makes his escape, wondering if he really believed he could kill Martino. Some other time, some other place, it's a resounding no, but not today. Peter gets back into his street clothes to visit his aunt. As he enters the hospital, he sees Martino being wheeled away, hating the idea that the same people who are saving his aunt are now saving Martino. But his dark thoughts are interrupted by Mary Jane. Peter, I've been so worried about you. Peter doesn't mince words. He needs to know how Aunt May is doing. Tears break from MJ's eyes. She's not going to make it. Peter and MJ head to Aunt May's room to watch her sleep, deep in a coma, clinging to life. Just one room over, Martino dies from his wounds. Suddenly, Spider-Man's spider sense catches the spider tracer nearby. The shooter is nearby. It's time. The man is chatting on the phone, telling the man who hired him that Martino is dead. He assures the client that Martino didn't talk. He's quickly shut up with a web to the face. Peter takes the phone from the shooter hand, telling him to be silent. Peter listens for a moment. Then he recognizes the voice, Kingpin. Well, hello, Mr. Parker, and what may I do for you? Just one thing, Mr. Fisk. You can die. Fisk explains to Peter that he can't die. People as powerful as him don't die. He has people to do that for him. Peter threatens him one more time, then slams the phone shut. He turns back to Martino's shooter, painfully yanking the webbing from his lips. The man said that Kingpin wanted Martino out of the picture because he knew something, something Kingpin didn't want anyone else to know. Peter stares at the man. Peter had sworn he'd kill anyone involved in the shooting, but this man was just a pawn, just another helpless soul used by Kingpin. Back in his cell, Kingpin is approached by a guard, one of many guards in Kingpin's pocket. Kingpin began tearing apart his cell, the desk, the chair, the mattress. Hiding inside every nook and cranny were dozens of rolled up $100 bills, millions of dollars lining 
visiting Kingpin's prison cell. Kingpin packs a fortune into a sheet, then hands it to a guard. The guard needs to pay off every single guard in this facility, making sure they all turn a blind eye to what's about to go down tonight. Later that night, Peter says his goodbyes to his ailing aunt. Mary Jane says he should stick around, but he's got places to go, criminals to kill. Peter sneaks outside the window before the nurse arrives. He swings through the darkness, headed straight for Rikers Island Prison, ready for one final battle against the kingpin of crime. Inside the prison, inmates are awoken to the sounds of their cell doors clicking open. Every single criminal locked up in this place suddenly walks free. Who did this? The mastermind behind it all, Wilson Fisk, exits his cell. Sitting on the floor is a box containing his trademark white suit and red bow tie. Kingpin and Spider-Man simultaneously suit up, both knowing exactly what comes next. Spider-Man weaves his way past security, the night shift guards that were paid to look the other way to this short-term prison break. Spider-Man and Kingpin meet each other in the center of the prison, face-to-face -face and surrounded by a thousand screaming inmates like a barbaric gladiator match. End of the road, Fisk. You, me, right now. Kingpin towers over Spider-Man, reminding Peter that Fisk has a massive advantage. Look around at their makeshift arena. Kingpin has a thousand men on his side. Call it home field advantage. Spider-Man remains silent. His eyes eyes narrowed. He's not intimidated by the murderers, the psychopaths, the thugs surrounding him. There's only one man on his mind. Kingpin smirks. He's used to Spider-Man doing most of the talking, so he continues, mocking Peter for being too slow to save Aunt May, too weak to take the bullet that was meant for him. But I guess you can't make an omelet without breaking a few old ladies. Too far, Fisk. Spider-Man attacks with furious rage, punching and kicking again and again in rapid success session. The kingpin of crime stumbles back, growling with rage. Fisk is a big guy, but Spider-Man packs a punch. His massive fist grips his cane as he continues to mock Spider-Man. Spidey's trademark sarcastic quips are nowhere to be seen. Kingpin jokes about how unfortunate it is that all Peter has left is the desire for revenge. Spider-Man again attacks Kingpin, smashing his face with a dozen lightning fast punches before Fisk can even react. Kingpin collapses to the floor, blood oozing from his nose. Fisk's eyes show fear. Did he underestimate Spider-Man? Is he actually ready to kill tonight? But Fisk's overwhelming cockiness replaces the fear. He wipes the blood from his nose, then mocks Spider-Man for his cheap theatrics. Quick, sudden attacks? This isn't a fight. This is a show. This is intimidation. But once again, Spider-Man refuses to speak. Well, you said you were coming to kill me. Are you here to fight or dance? Say something, damn you! Kingpin is on the ropes. He's scared, angry. So for the first time, Spider-Man speaks. All right. The crowd grows silent, their cheers replaced by a terrified curiosity. The suit Peter wears, it stands for something. It stands for the things he swore to do, the people he swore to protect, and it stands for the things he swore to never do, the lines he would never cross. I'm not here to kill you. Spider-Man lifts his mask. He pulls off the suit, the symbol of his purity, the symbol of his refusal to kill. I am. Peter, free of the values he holds most dear, charges toward Kingpin, ready to kill. The crowd roars as they fight. Peter doesn't hear it. To him, there is no crowd. There are no jokes, no cute remarks, no acrobatics, no webbing, no tricks. Peter thinks only one thing, that this is the man responsible for the bullet that ripped through one of the two people he loves more than life itself. Kingpin gathers himself, strained by the beating that the vengeful Peter just administered. Peter marches toward Kingpin, reminding him of something Fisk had forgotten, something he should have thought about before he put a bullet in an old lady. For all your money, for all your cruelty, for all your talk, you don't have any real power. You can't fly, can't stick to walls, can't turn into a living flame or stretch out across a 20-foot room. At the end of the day, this man who thinks he has ultimate power is just that, simply a fat man with a bad attitude. He's a balloon, just waiting around for something with a needle. And me? I'm the needle. Peter struck a nerve. All Kingpin has is that illusion of power. Peter just proved that it's worthless. Fisk screams and charges at Peter, who reminds him what real power is. One more right hook to send Kingpin to the floor in a pool of blood. Kingpin chokes on his blood, swearing to God that Peter will pay. He mutters empty threats, 
but right now, he's just a pathetic man curled up on the floor. Peter orders Fisk to stand, but he can't. Not after that beating, so Peter makes him stand. Then he slaps him across the face, again and again and again. The inmates watch in horror as the man they've deemed powerful gets beaten to a pulp. Balloon Needle! Now, here's how it's going to happen. Peter jams his wrist onto Kingpin's teeth. He's going to pour a stream of webbing deep into his throat, filling his lungs. It will take three seconds to turn his entire respiratory system into one big solid chunk of webs. One, two, three. The fear in Kingpin's eyes are palpable. He knows he's about to die. But then Peter lets go. If you're going to kill me, get it over with. Oh, I will. I said I was going to kill you, and I am. But I didn't say I was going to do it today. Peter learned something today about Kingpin, something about cruelty, and something about timing. He's done something far worse than killing Fisk. He's beaten him. And every man in this room saw me beat you. Word will get out. Kingpin's not as strong as he thought. Soon, the whole city, the whole country, will know what Kingpin already knows deep down, that he's not as powerful as everyone thinks. So, here's how it's going to happen. The moment his Aunt May dies, Peter's coming back. There's nothing Kingpin can do to stop it. Peter will come and count to three, only this time, Fisk will be dead. Peter turns to the stunned crowd, addressing them. They will put the word out. If they touch his family, they are dead. Painfully, slowly, definitively. Peter grabs his suit and heads out, back to spend whatever time he has remaining with Aunt May by her side. Peter says that when May dies, so does Fisk, so he better start praying that God gives her every possible second of life, though a guy like Fisk shouldn't count on God to step in. See you around, Mr. Fisk. Count on it.